I'll go to attacks, swing with Brago, and the rest of my creatures. After damage, blink the squad. I'll bounce that, draw two cards, untap my mana rocks, and start my second turn. I mean, second main phase. All right, I'm gonna say it, but Brago King Eternal is my favorite commander, and this is probably my favorite commander deck. I love a good deal, and Brago brings the best value to a commander. As long as you can get in there for combat damage, he lets you reuse your creatures and your permanents over and over again forever. <laughs> I love it. But who is Brago, and how did he become an eternal king? On the plain of Fioria, the young Count Brago and his friend Savala fought for a better life and succeeded in creating the high city Pelena. However, just a few years into being crowned king, Brago was diagnosed with an uncurable disease. Rather than give up, he and the Custodi, a priesthood of sorts, tried every treatment to prolong his life. Eventually, he got to a point where he wasn't dead, but he wasn't alive either. In his last benevolent moment, he asked his friend Savala to kill him. Although it pained her, she knew it was for the best, and thrust her blade into his heart. However, rather than passing on into the next world, his spirit stayed, and the Custodi continued to call him king. With his body lying on the floor, so too did his humanity. He became a tyrant, undoing all the good he did in his life. Years later, Kaya was hired by Marchesa to kill Brago. Kaya is good at what she does, and striking the ghost down, this time Brago stayed dead. Brago, King Eternal, first came out as one of the main characters in the Conspiracy set. Conspiracy was a draft-focused set, adding in a number of unique cards that only work in the draft format, Conspiracy cards that are in the Command Zone, and the Monarch ability. Brago has never been an expensive card, although the foil held some value for a number of years. It wasn't very long before Brago started replacing another annoying Azorius bureaucrat, Grand Arbiter Augustine IV, as the main stacks deck in many circles. Instead of taxing spells on the way in, Brago resets some of the worst stacks pieces or mana rocks to avoid the downsides of those stacks pieces. I don't hold it against anybody for playing Brago as a Stax Commander, although he gets a really bad rap because of that. For me, he's the king of the value mart. For my deck, I focus on mainly creatures and some permanents that have good effects when they enter the battlefield. Just like Brago's story, my game plan is to start off inconspicuous playing a creature here or a mana rock there, and eventually reaching critical mass where I can manage my board and my opponents each round. My Brago learned from Kaya and Savala and has a few combos to close out the game. Otherwise, my opponents also become floating dead ghosts with no chance to win, but the game is still not over. The main combos are using Strionic Resonator with Brago to get infinite enter the battlefield effects, or you can use the creatures that come into the battlefield and untap lands, as well as a Deadeye Navigator and Eldrazi Displacer to get infinite mana, or you can use the Archaeomancer Shipwreck Dowser type effect with an extra turn and some of these effects that blink the creature every turn, or just Brago himself. The mid game for this deck is all about starting the value engines. It's important to get Brago out, but you need something to blink. Ideally a creature that draws you cards or helps to deal with your opponent's cards and permanents. There are some of the cheap spells used to protect Brago. There are also some really fun ones that will blink your entire team and save them from a wrath spell. Uh, that's one of my favorite things to do. If you're lucky, you'll get a Swiftfoot Boots or a Lightning Greaves to get Brago out quickly and protect him. Some other ways of protecting him are a few counter spells. I don't run the free counter spells in here on purpose, but I do want a little bit of protection if I can. And then a few removal or wrath of spells to clean up the board if things are getting out of hand, even in my regular uh, removal or spot removal isn't doing enough work. Now, if you want to change Brago into a CEDH deck, it can get by. It doesn't seem to be played much in the current meta, but the stacks version of the deck still lingers in some circles. As you can guess, you need to take out many of the slow or redundant pieces that I run in my deck and replace them with free counter spells, additional mana rocks, and the worst slash best stacks pieces. One of the cool parts about Brago is that it's a very cheap commander and can be a pretty cheap deck overall. 
Rather than playing some of the extra turn spells or more expensive mana rocks, you have some larger mana rocks like Thran Dynamo and Gilded Lotus that you can get a lot of value from, as well as a large assortment of creatures with great enter the battlefield abilities. I think you can make a solid budget Brago deck for under $50. Let me know down in the comments if you want me to try my hand at it. Lastly, if you'd like to see my Value Mart style version of Brago, we just played our Season 2 Episode 1 of Commander Melee a few weeks ago, and I piloted this deck. It had a pretty good showing, and there was actually a lot of politicking in this game, which is really on theme for Brago too. You can check out my Moxfield link and profile down in the description, as well as the link to the Commander Melee episode. Well, that was the ultimate guide to Brago King Eternal. What an interesting commander and deck. There's so much versatility, and I hope you try him yourself. Don't let the, the negativity around him hold you back. He's super fun. This is the first time I've done any kind of deck tech here on the channel. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below in the comments. Let me know what you liked, what you disliked. I'd really, you know, enjoy hearing from all of you and, and taking your feedback when, when I can. <laughs> Also, would you like me to do an ultimate guide for your favorite commander? Consider joining us on Patreon over at patreon.com slash kingdoms TV. Some of our patrons get the opportunity to have me do a deck tech for them, so check it out. Love to see you over there. Speaking of which, a big shout out to our samurai patrons, Chris Crowley, Worthy Glover, Chandler Carlisle, Jason Garner, John McManus, Jordan Ritchie, Morton Christensen, and Revolution Gaming. You are all the pillars of kingdoms. Thanks so much for watching, and remember... Keep it nerdy.